Hi, and welcome back to the show today. This is the Stretch Mobility Coach Show, and I am your host, Kim Narker, and I actually help people who experience pain and tightness stay away from surgery. And in today's episode, I want to talk about how I help people that are experiencing pain or tightness that seems to be coming from a diagnosis that is a musculoskeletal dysfunction that is in the spondy diagnosis area. You're going to notice today, if you're catching this show on YouTube, that I've got um, a little bit of black stuff on my forehead, and that's because um, it is Ash Wednesday as I am recording today. So that is what that is. Let's talk about what different types of spondy disorders are. Spondylitis or spondyloarthritis. These names are both disorders that are kind of confusing, but they're kind of mainly caused by inflammation in the joints, in the spine, and the pelvis. And under this family of disorders, you're also going to find psoriatic arthritis and reactive arthritis. And I urge you to look both of those up so that you can better understand those disorders so that you can speak to your healthcare provider to see which category your spondy, whether it's spondylitis or spondyloarthritis, um, falls under. I'm going to start and break down spondylolysis. This is a defect or a stress fracture in a pars interarticulus in the vertebral arch of the vertebrae. So if I'm looking at this little just vertebrae, this let's say this is L4 and this is L5, this would be the front part of the vertebrae. This is the disc, and then this would be um, the lower vertebrae under there. This is going to be your view from the front side as if you're looking this way into my spine. We're referring to this as the lumbar spine, so this would be lower in the lumbar region. But if you're taking a side view here, you're going to see the spinal cord here and outside that are going to be um, spinal nerves and those nerves run in between each of the vertebrae. And then this area in here is sort of a foramen, which is a hole or an opening that the spinal cord and the nerves go through. And if you flip this upside down here, right here, this vertebral arch here of this particular vertebrae, and this is L5 vertebrae, okay? This particular vertebral arch is where there's typically a defect or a stress fracture can occur in here, and we call this the PARS, P-A-R-S, interarticularis, okay? And that is a PARS defect that's typically on or found on this vertebral arch of the vertebrae. Now, this fracture can occur in the cervical and the lumbar spine, and that is spondylolysis. Now, again, bottom, this is your vertebral arch, and this is typically where that fracture or defect can be found. Now, I'm going to move forward now and talk about a different type of spondy, and that is a spondylolisthesis. Now, this is a slippage of the vertebrae onto our lower vertebrae. And what that means is this is your vertebrae. Let's say this is L4. This is L5 vertebrae. And when you have a spondylolisthesis and there is a slippage, what is actually happening is that this vertebrae is slipping anteriorly or posteriorly on top of another vertebrae. And this is categorized as a spinal instability, which means the vertebrae is going to move more than it should. And this movement is going to place pressure on that nerve, which can lead to low back pain, leg pain, can also lead to some degenerative changes. Now, what is the cause of these disorders? Each of the spondy disorders that I just spoke about that I listed out requires proper testing to provide a clear diagnosis. And you're going to get that diagnosis from your doctor. And the cause of each of these are different. And it can be, again, better described through a visit with your doctor. Now, what are treatment options for spondy disorders? When there are many 
insurance-based treatment options available for spondy diagnoses. And generally, your physician will send you over to physical therapy to improve your range of motion and your strength. And then other non-healthcare options are chiropractic care, holistic care, or stretch mobility coach care. Each care model is going to provide different outcomes that can help alleviate the pain and help you to modify your positions so that you don't have to experience pain associated with a spondy disorder. And if you've tried all of the available medical health care options and you've not gotten a benefit without long-term success, a stretch mobility coach will look at the joints above and below. So if this is your spondy that's happening, we're going to take a look at the joints above that area and all of the joints below that area. And um, we're going to look to improve true joint mobility in all of those, restore normal muscle function, to take the pressure off of that nerve, and then we're going to rebuild the muscle damage that has occurred. We're going to help prevent the further degeneration that can occur when you don't unlock and unrestrict these joints from their natural movement. And let me break this process down to you for you. So spondylitis or spondyloarthritis, the names of these disorders are really very confusing and mainly, again, it's just inflammation in the joint in the spine and pelvis. And again, you have those two areas, the psoriatic or the reactive arthritis that I urge that you speak to a doctor about. The spondylolysis is that fracture or PARS defect and the spondylolisthesis is a slippage. Now, when you have been diagnosed with these disorders, it doesn't mean that you need surgery to improve pain or improve the problem. In fact, surgery could be recommended if you have degeneration that has led to multiple problems. Now, damage from the low back is referred to the hip and it can cause and lead to damage in the hip and further damage down the lower body if the proper treatment is not started. And what we call as a stretch mobility coach, the deconditioning cycle has not been fully restored or repaired. I want to break this down a little bit more. I know that all of that stuff is a little, um, a little more information than you can probably process. But when you have pain, and that pain is associated with any of these spondy conditions, doesn't matter which one it is, you can be assured that in the area of the back that is associated with the pain, it's most likely due to the fact that that area is in a deconditioning cycle. And that cycle is where the nervous system, the muscle, and the joint are not functioning properly and the communication between the nervous system, the muscle and the joint is, I, I kind of look at it like it's a cycle like this that's turned on and that can happen in not just one joint of the body, but many different joints of the body. But when you are in a deconditioning cycle, that means that that communication from the nervous system, the joint and the muscle is sending messages that, hey, there is something wrong that I can't handle. Okay. And then that deconditioning cycle and that communication that's being sent is your joint is sending a message to the muscle to tighten and hold. And that muscle isn't going to just restore and turn back on and be able to contract and shorten or contract and lengthen like it's supposed to. And until you turn that cycle off at the joint level, the nervous system level, then you're going to get progressive muscle weakness that can lead to muscle atrophy. And then once that's set in, then degeneration sit, tends to advance. You see, your body doesn't have a way to correct the cycle on its own. So your body will provide a band-aid type stability so that you're able to function. And that function would be so that you'll be able to walk, bend, lift, push, pull, any of those activities that you want to be able to do, your brain and your body want to allow you to do that. And you will do it probably without any indication. But if you're in a deconditioning cycle, there are things that can happen on the backside that can actually lead to more pain and tightness. Now, 
when you're in a deconditioning cycle, your body doesn't send you a signal that damage is occurring. And when I say damage, I mean that you don't have any muscular support. That muscular support is supposed to support the spine or the hip or the joint. And because you don't have that, then when you bend, push, pull, squat, turn, when you walk the dogs, when you go get down on the floor, any of those things that happen could cause a spasm in a muscle because you don't have the joint mobility or the joint stability because um, you're in a deconditioning cycle and, and you don't get a signal that you're in that cycle and we say that damage is occurring because at this point in the game the joints are locked down the muscles are not working like they're supposed to so we call that an unhealthy musculoskeletal system because things are not working like they're supposed to damage starts happening because degeneration and degenerative changes which is arthritis tends to settle in areas where the joints are restricted and that inflammation or bony growth in between all of these foramens and the actual vertebrae can lead to damage because that damage is irreversible. We can't take arthritis away. I can't take a disc that has degenerated that is sort of like a raisin. I can't take those things away, but I can improve the mobility above and below those areas and keep you moving as best that you can move and keep the muscles as strong as possible. But if you don't fix these things when you have a diagnosis and you put it off because it doesn't bother you, the longer that deconditioning cycle is active and you don't fix that problem, the higher the risk that you're going to have some sort of injury. And those injuries can be a muscle spasm, you, like perhaps your back going out. You could um, herniate a disc. Injuries like that can occur because you haven't gone in and improved the mobility of that joint and improve the stability and the body can't give you that back. So these injuries can require surgery if there's too much degeneration that happens and you've gone through arthritis, degenerative disc disease, and stenosis and you're completely locked down. Your only relief at that time may only be surgery. However, some people have spondies and degeneration and pain and we can decrease that pain by them seeing a stretch mobility coach and help them avoid surgery altogether. So some of you can heal when the right treatment is combined. And at the stretch mobility coach, we look at all of those areas and we help you from progressing if you do have degenerative changes, and then we help you to restore mobility in each of the vertebrae and then restore deep stability and keep you strong so that you can avoid surgery altogether. Now, for those of you that want to know what you need to do to resolve pain and improve the health of your back, you need to regain normal mobility in your lumbar spine pelvis, hips, and restore deep muscle stability. And then when you have all of those deep functional foundations for your spine, then you can advance to functional strength programs, which are like squatting, deadlifting, pushing, pulling, twisting, and things like that. You will need monthly hands-on testing and routine strengthening that progresses ongoing to keep that area strong and to ensure the deconditioning cycle is not reactivating. If you have a diagnosis and you want to avoid surgery, hands-on testing is going to be required monthly as well as progressive strengthening and progressive mobility. And that mobility needs to be a hands-on mobility that kind of stretches the joint and opens it back up and then refires the muscle. And that needs to happen for the rest of your life to ensure the deconditioning cycle is not reactivating, turning back on, which could lead to degenerative changes. Now, seeking care from a stretch mobility coach can provide you with a long-term program that restores joint mobility above and below the spondy diagnosis. And some coaches provide regenerative natural treatments for arthritis inflammation, and other natural health alternatives. A stretch mobility coach will also prescribe a program that advances as your spondy is improving. The goal of your stretch mobility coach 
program is to restore full function in the neuromuscular system and provide preventative care so that the spondy dysfunction remains safe and does not damage other areas in the back, pelvis, or hips due to that deconditioning cycle. Now, Stretch Mobility Coach is a go-to provider if you are looking to prevent surgery. Other preventative strategies are going to include you need to maintain normal, healthy joint mobility throughout your entire body, maintain healthy muscle strength and flexibility, eat less foods that cause inflammation, get adequate sleep, work on your cardiovascular system, make sure that you're strengthening your musculoskeletal system and you're doing it progressively. Guys, just going at it alone and doing a strengthening program when you don't know what you're doing, you're going to get the results that are not going to keep your musculoskeletal system at their peak. Be consistent with mindfulness and relaxation. Decrease stress by being authentic when you can. And then you want to just make sure that anytime that you have a diagnosis, pain, or tightness, that you seek the right care and make sure you can get it restored as soon as possible so that the problem does not continuing on and lead to damage that is irreversible. Proven ways to relieve pain associated with a spondy diagnosis naturally and for good, you have to break that muscle deconditioning cycle that causes further joint damage and muscle weakness and deterioration. Keeping that spondy diagnosis as stable as possible while making sure that degenerative changes do not occur in advance is going to be key. Now, the stretch method has developed a proven process that takes a client who is experiencing pain and tightness with a spondy diagnosis. We take you through a successful program that relieves the pain and tightness for good. And this treatment focuses on finding why the pain and tightness is happening in the first place and whether it's associated with the spondy diagnosis or not. And a stretch mobility coach will develop a program based on your signs and symptoms and your current joint, nerve, and muscle deterioration at your consultation and then they're going to work with you until your joints muscles and nerve have been restored to their full potential once this occurs your stretch mobility coach will recommend a maintenance program that focuses care on keeping your joints muscles and nervous system at its peak to avoid surgery now, most of you are going to be asking, if you don't already know, what is a stretch mobility coach? And a stretch mobility coach is certified in the stretch method. It's currently a physical therapist assistant that can apply to train to work as a stretch mobility coach. They have to have graduated and have an active license in their prospective state. And the stretch method is a post-degree training program that places natural long-term relief back into the hands of licensed and graduated professionals. Now you can find a stretch mobility coach near you by going to www.thestretchmobilitycoach.com backslash find a coach. And that's where we list all of our coaches that are currently going through our program or have already graduated from our program. If you don't find a coach near you, you can actually request a coach in your area. Guys, if you've been diagnosed with a spondy disorder and you don't really know what's going on and maybe you have a little pain or you have a little tightness and you really don't feel like it's a big deal, it's best to go get a professional opinion from a stretch mobility coach to see what joints are involved, to go ahead and take the pressure off of the actual joint so that you don't have a progression that occurs and causes pain and tightness that could actually cause you to go the direct path towards surgery. We're actually a preventative clinic. So I hope this information is helpful for you. I will put a link below the show here so that you can click on it and find a coach in your area. And if we don't have a coach, please request a coach. Guys, thanks so much for joining me today. I appreciate it. And I hope you did find this helpful.